Let's have a bit of poker. Bo bo poker. <laughs> okay, and we are rolling. Ah, oh, completely forgot about the crop factor. Damn it. That's a face palm, by the way, you just can't see it. Yep, yeah, you probably guessed it, although you've probably seen the title. It's the EOS R review. Let's do this. Okay, so here I am today in Notting Hill, home of the carnival, the market, the hill, and probably Hugh Grant. Anyway, let's go take some photos. I've attended a press event and had a little bit of time with the camera, talked about the features, but what do I think after getting my hands on with it one month on? The Canon EOS R has been announced for quite some time now, about, about a month, so you probably made up your mind already, but anyway, I want to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Kai. Uh, no, not really. I'm a Canon user, yes. I've used the Canon C300 Mark II, I had the ATD, I had the EOS M5, had the 5D Mark III, not the 5D Mark IV. So I've got some weird kind of attachment with Canon. It's, it's just the typical Canon user, the, the typical Canon fanboy. Not quite fanboy, but you know, always talking about dual pixel autofocus, Canon color science, L lenses. Oh, LPE6 batteries. The menu system, menu systems are great. Yeah, I like the menu systems. And if you're into all that and yearn for a full frame mirrorless camera, the EOS R is what you should take a look at right now. But what's it like? Well, if you're used to Canon bodies, then you, you kind of will and you won't like this because it's a mix of old and new. I mean, when you feel it, it's pretty familiar, but then you've got some new bits which are not quite so familiar. It's made of some things old and some things new, but is this a camera marriage made in heaven? The look is good, doesn't matter. The grip is good, does matter. But then there are the controls which are very Canon-like, and of course the menus are just like Canon. Maybe because it is Canon, duh. Setting up is a familiar sight for those who've used Canon cameras before, but then there are new bits to shake things up a bit. But then you've got this custom slidey thing, touchy, slidey, slidey, switchy, buttony, touch sensitive kind of thing, which I can't really get used to. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's a touch sensitive bar which you can customize to your own liking, which sounds good if you like the one on your MacBook. The purpose of this is to make changing settings a breeze. But the thing is, it's all too easy to switch things accidentally. You can set a lock which requires you to hold the left section for a second or two to unlock, but then your quick and easy breezy settings change is not so quick and breezy after all. It's not all bad body news though, yes one card slot people, but there is a customizable ring that I do like, and you can get an EF adapter to give your EF lenses the same ring that allows you to change settings. You can even change the direction of your focus ring if you're used to focusing Nikon lenses, even if the menu is making a sad face at you for being a Nikon fanboy. I mean, this is like the only area where people just like taking pictures of people's houses here. I'm just going to stand in front of your doorstep and, and just take photos of your, your building. When you look at the images from the EOS R, it's like meeting up with an old friend. Maybe that's because most of the innards are actually from the old Canon 5D Mark IV. But no, it's the way it beautifully renders those skin colours. It makes you feel so warm inside. Image quality wise, I've always liked Canon colours. That is one of the main attractions. Although it has to be said that the image isn't anything groundbreaking. It's a 5D Mark IV, god damn it. The high ISO performance is respectable, but not class leading. I'm getting kind of doorstep envy now. I wish, wish I had a doorstep that interesting. That people just, no, no, actually no, 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 I don't. Get off my doorstep. Another thing I can't comprehend, although the body ergonomics are good, is the big thing hanging off the front of it. The lenses are. Frickin' big. It's a mirrorless camera, yes, I can understand that lenses aren't necessarily small, but that's ridiculous. I mean, just look at the size of that. The lens, not Gordon's face. The 2470 f2 is a hugely impressive optical design, but impressively huge at the same time. And the 50mm f1.2 RF is about 10 miles longer than the EF version. But hey, the glass is nice and sharp. Performance on the street, generally good. Mostly it was well behaved and focused on what I wanted it to focus on. I was using face detection and it was quite reliable apart from a few situations. Just like with this shot, I gave it two tries before this one and for some reason with face detection on, I thought, hmm, this cardigan is more interesting than this human with a real face. But anyway, I quickly switched it to single point AF and boom, luckily I liked this shot better anyway. Now, people always talk about how useful a tilty flippy screen is, but this kind of tilty flippy screen, a selfie tilty flippy screen, 
not quite so useful for when you're doing the low down stuff because you have to flip the screen out. On the flip side, <laughs> uh, it's great for vloggers and people who can't get enough of themselves. Oh, and look, it's me asking about in front of a camera. The face detection is mostly good. I couldn't recreate the AF slip ups and it didn't really make me concerned about the camera. The 5D Mark IV was at one point my go-to camera for street photography. It wasn't the most advanced, the highest res. It was a workhorse. It just worked well. The files looked good straight out of cameras. You know, some cameras you can just feel right at home with and not fumble about with them trying to get that shot. The EOS R is just like that. I feel right at home with it. Just a shame the lenses couldn't be a bit more subtly sized for street photography. Other than that, in terms of body, the only thing I'd grumble about is the lack of in-body stabilisation. I mean, you can get some slow shutter speeds with the optical eyes, but not quite as impressive as the in-body stabilisation from Nikon and Sony for stills. I mean, that really is the main complaint about the body on the EOS R, and also the fact that when you switch to video mode, you have to click mode and then info. A dedicated switch would be nice, you know, a la Nikon. Ah, see, once you switch it to video, that's when the true grumbling comes out. To properly get the best out of the Canon EOS R for video, it's best to use it with an external recorder slash monitor, not just because you get 10 bit 422. But another good reason to use an external monitor slash recorder is to give you a zebra function because the EOS R doesn't have it. And once you hit record, the histogram disappears. And I've got more grumbling to do, but let's get some positives in there before I tear it a new mount hole. For a start, the Dual Pixel AF works unlike no other. In some ways, it's kind of unrivaled. And then we've got the tilty flippy screen. Yes, I know it's for vlogging and it's not useful for everything. And, and importantly, I put it 4K side to side with a Sony a7 III and the Canon appeared as sharp, if not a little bit sharper. Could be lens. Some people were saying the 4K is soft, but I tried everything, but I'm on tripods, manual focus in both, same result. Okay, so positives out of the way. Are you ready for some grumbles now? Sony rolling shut is like a benchmark of what you don't want. Canon has passed that. It's severe in 4K. Imagine what it would be like in full frame if it could do it. And yes, as you know, the 4K is a 1.75 times crop, 720, 120p. Don't bother. You've got 60p in full HD mode, which is decent, but not extraordinarily so. Well, you could look in one of two ways. The 4K is crawled, but I shoot most of my stuff 1080p anyway, or it's 2018. It depends if you're glass half full or glass half empty kind of person, but for me, it's more like a video half frame kind of thing. But look, with crop video, you could use their crop lenses, right? One of the workarounds that you don't get with the Canon 5D Mark IV that you can get with the EOS R is the fact that you can use EFS lenses. But once you put those EFS lenses on, 1080, 60p, it's gone. Grayed out. 720, 120p, it's gone. And when you're using the EFS lenses, the crop in 4K, exactly the same as 1080. In other words, the 4K has a crop factor of 1.75 times, as you know, but then when you use those lenses meant for 1.6 times crop, it still forces you to use a 1.75 times crop in 1080 mode. Just so you don't need to imagine it, this is a 1.6 times crop frame, and this is how much unnecessary croppage is going on in 1080 mode with EFS lenses. Then we have C-Log, which grades absolutely beautifully, but then it forces you to use manual mode. You can't shoot C-Log in after priority, shutter priority, and you can't have auto ISO. I mean, I just don't see why it's not available. It doesn't make sense. Urgh. Grumbling over. But you know, with the video, I'm sure some of it could be down to technical limitations, but a lot of it is down to design. It's a mix of new and old. New design, new concept new system, a smaller body, with that familiar feel, that colour science. For some, the issues are things that they can deal with. The crop might be useful for people who shoot a lot of wildlife, but for some others, these issues will make them feel as if this is a case of another new body, but the same old story. 
as someone that has used and appreciated Canon products, I can find myself liking using the EOS R for stills. Sometimes the best camera is not something that can be quantified by specs and figures alone. I mean, it has a 5 FPS burst. For video, it feels like they could have knocked it out of the park with this one, but for now, it's a bit of this. That's a facepalm, by the way.